Joseph was five months old when he got it and he was just looking unwell, looking uncomfortable, like he was in pain really. And his temperature started going up a bit. And um, as the morning went on, I thought, no, I need to see a doctor. This isn't right. Took him to the GP and the GP just sent him straight to the hospital. Said, I can't find a reason why your child's so ill. But he is. So, I mean, you know, I thought, what could it be? I just thought maybe he's just picked up some virus. When we got there, they assessed him and um, gave him some paracetamol. And then they sent us home because they couldn't find a reason. And they thought, well, he's not really seriously ill. His temperature's gone down a little bit. He had some milk. So we came home. And uh, in the early hours of the night, he started screaming and he was sick. And it was so bad, this screaming, that we we thought, God, he's seriously ill. So um, we thought, well, we have to get him back to hospital. So my husband took him, and then about five o'clock in the morning, he phoned to say they think he's got meningitis, and it was devastating. I just dropped the phone. I couldn't believe that this had happened. I felt sick. I thought... How can my child have meningitis? He, he was all right this time yesterday, really. He wasn't, like, seriously ill. By the time I got to the hospital, about 8 o'clock in the morning, um, the doctor said, yes, we're sure it's meningitis. We've done the lumbar puncture, but we're not sure which type it is. And I, I wasn't really aware of all the types of meningitis. And um, he said, well, the thing is, we don't want it to be bacterial uh, because that can leave a lot of problems. It can... All he said at that time was it can cause a lot of problems, and I thought, right, that must be quite serious. And he said it's it's pneumococcal. He said it's it's not nice. He said, but hopefully it's viral because we've caught it quite early. We feel and viral tends to clear up quite quickly. You know, he was trying to be as positive as possible. So I thought, right, okay, we we'll just hope for the best. But he Joseph was lying there in this cot, screaming in agony, and it was the worst thing a parent can see. Uh, their five-month-old baby in such pain and you're not being able to do anything whatsoever about it. You are at the mercy of the antibiotics and that is it. And even the doctor said, we're doing everything we can. We've started him straight away on these antibiotics. Um, we, we're giving him, I think it's some sort of anti-inflammatory drug, but I can't quite remember. And they can't give that for very long because I think in the end it becomes detrimental in some way. But he said, we're doing everything we can and the results will be from the lab as soon as possible. And he said, don't leave the hospital in case it's viral because then it could be contagious. And in that case, you might have to take antibiotics. And then, um, oh God, what seemed like an eternity, the doctor came back in and I just looked at his face and I absolutely knew what he was going to say. And I said, it's pneumococcal, isn't it? And he said, I'm afraid it is. And I just absolutely sunk back in that chair and I lost all sense of my surroundings completely. I just sobbed and sobbed. I just, I, I just thought my baby's going to die. That's what I thought. Even talking about it now makes me feel physically ill. That's how bad it was. He was in hospital for a whole week and then was allowed home, but I had to take him every day for his antibiotics in his cannula. Um, we felt absolutely devastated. Um, I had to do the day and John did the night, so we never were there together because one of us had to be at home with Anya. So that was difficult because we couldn't be there together. Um, I think it was probably the worst time of my life. It was the most hideous, horrific experience in my life. I just sat there, just staring at him, thinking, please live. That was the first thing. I just, please live, please live. And then I realised, because it was pneumococcal, that there could be repercussions afterwards. And so after just saying I just wanted him to live, then I thought, please don't let him be badly damaged by this please don't let there be some awful brain damage or um hearing problems you know and then I began just looking at him thinking what's it doing to your brain what's it doing to your brain you know and then I almost felt guilty for doing that because I thought well just two days ago you were just saying please let my child live now all of a sudden that's not enough you don't want him to be badly affected but obviously that's only a human response isn't it but um it was just dreadful, you know. But things were a little better when he wasn't in so much pain. I think in those initial hours, watching him screaming out in agony was just appalling. You know, I can still see him in my mind. Tiny little thing with this great, what seemed a massive nappy on, all these wires coming off him just screaming. Awful, dreadful. Mm. 
absolutely. It did take him a long time to get over it because he used to sleep all the time. He suffered, I don't know what you would call it, but he needed to sleep. His body just needed to recover in that way so that when we finally got him home, he would sleep nearly the whole day. And that did go on for at least two or three weeks, really. I mean, I think his body had been so assaulted, really, that um, he was exhausted. He was absolutely exhausted. He had this in December 2006 and now, in fact, almost straight away after three uh, appointments with a paediatrician, say by March 2007, they discharged him because they said there's no reason to keep him on our books because he isn't showing any specific problems. So what we'll do is we'll discharge him and then if you or your husband feel that things aren't quite right, then you contact your GP and then we'll see him again. So that was how it was left. But we did see the audiologist quite frequently because they did want to test and they um, discovered his cochleas were still working and they could do surround sound, they could test that, but because he was so young, he wouldn't allow them to keep whatever they had to do to stick in his ears to test the inner sound of his ears. Um, so that only occurred last summer and uh, he, he just was fine. As far as they're concerned, there's no damage to the hearing whatsoever, so they discharged him. But Joseph was quite delayed in his walking, and we didn't know whether that was anything to do with the meningitis, and we still don't really. He was nearly two um, when he walked independently. But the physio couldn't find anything wrong because I instigated an assessment with the physio because I thought, well, he should really be making a bit more of an effort. And she said she couldn't find anything wrong and he's walking fine now. So that was that, really. I do worry about him getting it. I'm really concerned about it. Whenever he gets a high temperature, I immediately think, oh, my God, it's not meningitis, is it? Which anyone else would think that was quite ridiculous. But I think when you've been through it, you do realise it, it's, happening. it's happening all the time and it can happen to your child. And I did ask the paediatrician at the time, what are his chances of getting pneumococcal again? And he said, well, very, very rare. But that doesn't mean to say that he he's not going to get some sort of viral meningitis and I'm very concerned about it and I would say that um, a result of what we've all been through is that I will take him to the GP and my daughter um, if they do have a temperature and I don't feel ashamed at all about doing that. I think it's important for parents to be vigilant. It has affected our little family because it shocked John and I to bits. We really were horrified by it and uh, as a result we're very concerned about the health of our children. Um, so, as I was saying, I don't hesitate to take them to the doctors if they're unwell. And um, we're just so grateful that we still have Joseph, so grateful. I would say to any parent, if you're concerned about the health of your child in any way, don't delay in getting medical advice. I am totally pro-vaccinations. I think it's every parent's duty to get their child vaccinated against everything and anything that is available because there is nothing worse than looking at your child fighting uh, a very serious illness. And if you haven't done everything you could have done to prevent that, then I hate to think how awful you would feel.